some elements are more stable than uh, other elements. So, um, for example, uh, iron is more stable than, say, carbon. When something is more stable, can we usually say it is high or low energy? Low. Yeah, stability means low energy. So less stable means high energy. That's why I put carbon higher on the board to indicate the higher energy. For example, let's say that this carbon had an energy of 10 and this iron had an energy of 3. And then we could also compare that to, say, helium. You could say that has an energy of um, 17. I'm just making up some arbitrary numbers here with no units, just to make a little point. So the differences here don't really matter. I'm just making up some arbitrary numbers. Um, or actually, let's think about this. We could imagine splitting these up into just separate protons and neutrons. Now, it turns out that that's the least stable of all. Um, protons and neutrons like coming together in a nucleus. So um, I'll give this the biggest number, uh, say 17. OK. By the way, um, I, I guess uh, we should also briefly talk about uh, charge. Though, actually, maybe we don't need to go into that too much, because you guys aren't really focusing on charge too much. But what is the charge on a proton? Well, normally we say the charge on a proton is positive 1e. E is a good unit, elementary charge unit for a proton. It's also um, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. 1E is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. But just like it's easier to use AMUs instead of kilograms, it's easier to use elementary charge units instead of coulombs. It's easier to use AMUs instead of kilograms. It's easier to use elementary units instead of coulombs. So what is the charge on an electron? minus 1e, or minus 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. What's the charge on an electron? I'm sorry, on a neutron? Yeah, zero. That's why it's called neutron neutral. Now, do like charges attract or repel? repel. They repel. So that, it, 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 that should make us a little puzzled. How can we pack all the protons into the nucleus? Doesn't it seem like they should repel each other? Remember we said how the nucleus was so small. How are we getting all those positive protons into the nucleus? It seems like the electric force should make them repel each other. So there must be some other force that operates in the nucleus to hold all the protons and the neutrons together. That's called the strong nuclear force. You learn about a, lot, a little bit in physics. So there's another force that we don't usually talk about called the strong nuclear force that holds the nucleons together in the nucleus. Um, okay. So, um, and because that strong nuclear force is quite strong, actually all the protons and neutrons like being together in the nucleus. That's why I put these separate things up here on the top, because they are less happy than when they're together in the nucleus. They like to get, to get together so they can attract each other with the strong nuclear force. So this is at the top of this table. All right, so this would have the highest number for the energy. But now, what I want to show is that there's two different ways to think about energy. Another way to think about energy is how much energy would it take to change the nucleus into separate protons and neutrons. That's the binding energy. The binding energy is how much energy it would take to unbind the nucleus. Maybe it should be called the unbinding energy. The binding energy might be easier to understand if we call it the unbinding energy. It's how much energy we have to put in to unbind the nucleons in the nucleus and turn them into separate protons and neutrons. So I just made up these arbitrary numbers. But based on these numbers, what would be the binding energy of the iron nucleus?
based on these numbers I made up, what would be the binding energy of the iron nucleus? Um, if the level of the energy in iron is 3, and the separate protons and neutrons would have an energy of 17, what would be the binding energy? How much energy would it take to go from here to here? 14. Oh, yeah, 14. 14. So the binding energy would be 14. I really should be calling these uh, energies per nucleon. So these all represent energy per nucleon. So if the energy of the iron is 3 units per nucleon, and the separate protons and neutrons have an energy of 17 units per nucleon, then it would take 14 units per nucleon to go from here to here. Okay. Uh, how about carbon? What's its binding energy? Right, because that's what binding energy means, right? The binding energy is the unbinding energy. It tells us how much energy it would take to take the, the to c collected uh, nucleus and change it into separate protons and neutrons. So, yeah, so, so binding energy refers to how much it would take to go from here to here. What would that be? So, seven? Yeah. So, if we were solving a problem like this, would she give us, like, a table to solve this? Um, well, she won't, you won't be given these energies directly. We're going to have to work up to that. You're going to be able to figure out the binding energies from the masses. You'll be given a table of the masses, which hopefully we'll get to in a minute or two. Okay. okay. So between carbon and iron, who is the more stable? Um, iron. Yeah. So who has the lower absolute energy? Who has the lower energy level? Iron. Yeah, 3 is less than 10. But who has the lower binding energy? So this is a common student confusion that I wanted to, to clear up right here. There's two different ways to think about the energy. You can think of the energy as just being what level you're at, or the energy could be how much it takes to get up to here. And those are inversely related to each other. It's like the lower you are in a pit, the, the, um, the greater the distance between you and the top of the pit. Um, so when you're at a very low level in the pit, you're also at a very great distance from the top of the pit. So, if you're at a very low height in meters, you're at a very high distance in meters from the top of the pit. So if you're at a very low absolute energy, that actually means a high binding energy. So there's two different uses of the term energy here. What, um, you, normally we just use energy to mean the level that you're on. And in that case, low energy means more stable. But another term for energy is how much energy it would take to get up higher. Uh, and in that case, more stable means a higher binding energy. Okay. So because there's these two different uses of the word energy, sometimes energy means, sometimes low energy means more stable, and sometimes it means less stable. The level of the energy, low energy level, means more stable. But high binding energy means more stable. All right, here's a graph of binding energies. Um, and notice that uh, this point here, is this the most stable or the least stable point? Mm, least, because it's high. <laughs> Wait. This is a table graph of binding energies. So this is the most stable. This is the most stable. Because there's an inverse relationship. Um, yeah, because uh, this is, means that it would take the most energy to break this into separate nucleons. It would take the most energy to break this into separate nucleons, so it would be the lowest in this little chart that I was making here. In fact, this is iron. Iron is the most stable of the nucleuses. And then carbon would be down here. It takes less energy to break up carbon because carbon is higher on the absolute energy chart. So it's unfortunate that we're using energy in two different terms that have slightly different meanings. So where would the separate protons and neutrons be on this graph, high or low? Um, low. Yeah, because they have very low binding energy. In fact, in a sense, their unbinding energy is zero. The unbinding energy is supposed to be how much energy it takes to turn you into separate protons and neutrons. But these are already separate protons and neutrons, so they have a binding energy of zero. On the horizontal axis here, we have the mass number. So the protons and neutrons would be over here, because they have the smallest masses. So right around here, we can put separate protons and neutrons. Maybe I should put them down at zero. Yeah, they should be at zero. Because they have a binding energy of zero. So the binding energy for any element is how high it is on this graph.
For example, if an element was here, its binding energy would be how much uh, would be this distance. Or if an element is here, its binding energy would be this distance. Iron is the most stable, so it has the highest binding energy. So if we go in this direction, is this a favored or an unfavored reaction? because we're going away from stability. That's right. So it would be endo or exothermic. Endo. endo. Yeah, you gotta put energy in to make it happen. On the other hand, if we're going in this direction, we're going to where we want to go. So energy would be released. So when we're going down, energy here is absorbed, and when we're going up, energy is released. 